Hey, David Brewster here with another 3 for all, and this is 3 Blue Saraceno Licks from 1995. And uh, a lot of you watching this might be thinking, who's Blue Saraceno? And then those of you who know who I'm talking about, you might be like, yeah! Um, because Blue Saraceno is a monster uh, guitar player. So honestly, if you're not really uh, sure who Blue Saraceno is, he really is kind of the modern day uh, Tommy Tedesco, in my opinion. Uh, he, his music appears everywhere. Uh, commercials, TV shows, movies, video games. Um, so even if you don't know who Blue Saraceno is, you've heard him play guitar. You've heard him sing. You've heard his music, his production work. Um, you know, these days, like the last, you know, last few decades, he's been this kind of guitar ninja uh, producer, uh, engineer, songwriter. You know, um, his music appears everywhere. So check this out. So back in the day, in 1992, I actually jumped in the car with a singer that I was working with. Um, and we were, you know, basically kids. <laughs> um, we jumped in the car and I drove all the way to Chicago. Uh, I wasn't living in Chicago at the time. Um, but that's, that's my hometown. But we drove all the way to Chicago to see Blue Saraceno. He did a clinic and I remember he came out and he had combat boots and these like cut off, you know, like camo shorts and his hair was literally everywhere. And there were a bunch of people there, it was packed. And I remember he came out, plugged in, and just started rocking. And I was, you know, in awe. I was like, oh my God. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe it. He was exceptional. He was really goofy and kind of funny. And, uh, you know, completely different than a lot of other players I, you know, had met or been around at that time. He just came off as like this, just, you know, he just, it was like he wasn't even, he didn't have to try, you know, he was just, it was effortless, you know, and he sounded amazing. In my library of, uh, you know, books and music and, and my little archives or whatever, uh, my hall and wall of shame, um, I do have a blues book, and he was handing out blues books at that clinic, and uh, I do have like a little stash. I've got the Never Look Back uh, transcription book, and I've got all the CDs, you know, that he released as a solo artist. Definitely check out what he's been doing in recent years because he's released a lot of music, like way more than most of you probably even realize, even if you're a fan. Um, hop on YouTube, which you're, I guess you're already there, but look for him and uh, you'll find there's a crazy mix of like all this really dark country stuff, like this dark kind of bluesy country, like Western kind of music, which is really cool. Um, you know, a bunch of songs about devils and gunslingers and, uh, you know, that stuff is really cool. And he's singing and playing guitar and it sounds awesome. And then he has like this modern, like kind of melodic metal kind of rock stuff that's really cool. Um, definitely check out his new music. Uh, you know, if you're not hip to his old stuff, go back and listen, you know, to the old recordings, you know, Plaid and Never Look Back and some of those. Uh, Hair Pick's really good too. And if all that wasn't enough, uh, one more thing about blues before we uh, start here. Um, he's very respected. Uh, he has a lot of big named, uh, you know, guitarists that are fans. And I think one of the biggest fans of Blue Saraceno uh, was the, the late great uh, Dimebag Daryl. Uh, Dimebag loved Blue Saraceno. And there were some stories that kind of circulated that Dimebag loved Blue Saraceno so much, he would listen to him while he slept. Like, he would put it on at night and go to sleep listening to Blue Saraceno's music, you know, drive around in his car or whatever. That's awesome. All right, well, these licks are going to be coming from uh, kind of a candid bootleg uh, video from a NAMM show back in 1995. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of cut up, you know, these three licks we're going to look at. The first one's from Remember When, which is uh, the opening track from his uh, Never Look Back album. And um, he's caught, you know, during this little candid concert moment, uh, you know, playing this tune. So here's the lick. It's something like this. Really, really cool lick, and I love that opening kind of, uh, you know, it's all E minor based, but that opening melody. You know, really expressive. And then I love this little kind of, I mean, there's a lot of guitarists that have played with this little arpeggio. It's kind of a, 
you know, David Gilmour and Slash, and there's a lot of guitarists that have you know, kind of soloed from that little, uh, you know, D major triad right there. And of course that triad moves around. And, uh, but he's playing this little arpeggio. And then he kind of moves back to the A and grabs B there too. And it's almost like a pedal point thing after that. And I love the way he comes down. And it's really, really cool. Um, such a cool lick. next lick comes from the song Tommy Gun uh, during his performance at this NAMM show. And uh, I love uh, these licks and ideas that Blues uh, plays. And he's kind of flirting with what I call the Mixolydian pentatonic, like this. But I call that Mixolydian pentatonic because it's definitely flirting with a Mixolydian flavor. But then it also feels like a pentatonic scale because it's just two notes per string. Um, you know, so there's E minor. You know, E minor pentatonic, that is. You know, there's the E blues scale. And then this mix of living pentatonic. So there you have three shades of E. And, you know, a lot of what blues, you know, plays and solos over, you know, it's either, you know, leaning more toward a minor tonality or he loves sevenths. You know, he has a lot of funky, you know, songs. All right, so this lick is based in that, uh, you know, mixed Lydian pentatonic shape, and he's kind of doing this really cool, uh, you know, mix and match of uh, legato and picking. So he's, you know, doing this. It's a really cool lick, and there, you know, he's doing a pull-off to start with. And there he's, you know, he's kind of almost double picking uh, that G sharp. And he does the same thing uh, between the G and the B string. And then the same thing between the G and the D. And then he ends it with this uh, kind of half step wide bend, uh, you know, G to G sharp. So he's kind of flirting with that major third. You know? And that's a big, you know, kind of trademark, especially in his earlier music. Now, nowadays, he's all over the place, but, um, you know, his early, you know, kind of instrumental albums, he flirted with those three, you know, scales and flavors all the time. And he would bend and slide and tap and do all sorts of stuff. Um, but he would mix and match those three worlds, pentatonic, blue scale, and that makes linear pentatonic too. And that lick kind of showcases it right there. <laughs> Such a cool lick. All right, the last lick is also from uh, his performance of Tommy Gunn at this NAMM show. And uh, I've actually uh, had this lick uh, in my bag of tricks or my lick bag or whatever for a long time. And uh, it wasn't until I, you know, put this lesson together and started looking at, you know, some of his live performances and I was kind of going back and listening to some of his music. And then I heard that lick and I was like, wait a minute. And I had no idea. Yeah, I totally stole this from Blue Saraceno. And I've been playing this lick for a long time. Uh, a couple decades now, you know, and uh, totally lost sight of where it came from. Totally stole it from him. And uh, once again, we're in E, and here he's flirting with the blue scale. So how I was telling you, you know, a minute ago, how he, he likes to mix and match those three flavors of scales. Um, and here he is, you know, flirting with the, the blue scale now. And he's doing a speed lick, which we talked about that in the J.P. Lee uh, 3 for All recently. But he's doing a speed lick basically here between uh, G, A, B flat, and B. So here's the lick so you can hear what it sounds like. So slowly that looks like this. Really cool lick. And, uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, if you're not really familiar with Blue Saraceno, I highly recommend, you know, check out uh, his music. You can find it on television, you can find it in video games, you can go back and listen to some of his albums. Um, you know, he's collaborated and worked with a lot of different musicians too. So, uh, you know, phenomenal guitarist and, you know, definitely kind of a, 
hidden treasure or a kind of forgotten hero or however you want to look at his, uh, you know, his career. Um, he's extremely successful, you know, brilliant songwriter, musician, producer, um, you know, phenomenal. Um, but a lot of people have no idea who he is, um, but simply because he's kind of working, you know, behind the scenes. So his music speaks, you know, volumes, even though you rarely, you know, hear his name or see his face. All right, well, leave some comments and feedback, and please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back with some more chord play and three for all and content before you know it. Thank you.